Buenas tardes. Good evening. Um, today we have the second day of masterclass here at Interdocs Barcelona. And basically yesterday we had with us Zeina Asi from, from Tribeca Film Institute and Damian Kirchner from Mediamorphosis from Argentina. And today basically we have two more masterclass and uh, we will share this masterclass with uh, Luis Richard Tremblay and his producer at the National Film Board of Canada. And basically uh, what he will do is you will see like a showcase of projects. It will be a very interesting session and uh, basically you can watch uh, on a streaming as well. So it will be the first panel of today, the first uh, session. <clears throat> and then we will have as well uh, another speaker afterwards, which basically is Arjan Lin from the Billing de Koning Academy from the Netherlands, who will tell us about a case study, about music as weapon, and about uh, her experience basically uh, teaching and um, working on projects, transmedia basically, and audiovisual as well. Okay, so we will have this kind of uh, landscape today. So uh, thank you very much, Luis Richard. It will be as equal as it was. For us, it's like uh, uh, an honor and a pleasure to have National Film Board on board on the festival. So let's give a hand to Luis Richard and we'll start this. Hola. Um, so I'm going to do it in English, of course. Um, it's my second language to me too, so I'm going to go at my pace. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to interrupt during my presentation. Uh, I'm a producer at the Interactive Studio, so uh, what I look for is really like to create some kind of interaction with all of you. Uh, and and w the way I'm going to do that is really going uh, as deep as I time will allow me into specific projects that carry uh, the essence of how we do things at the NFB. So let's start. So the, the NFB was created in 1939 uh, by a guy from... Uh, from Scotland, uh, Gr uh, Grayson. Uh, so he was a filmmaker and he was called in Canada uh, to create the National Film Board of Canada. He was making war movies to engage Canadian population in Second World War. So engagement is a foundation at the NFB. Uh, in 1941, he brought in this guy, another Scott, uh, Scott, Scott guy, uh, Norman McLaren. Uh, from those of you who know him, he's, he's perceived as one of the pioneer of many technology we still play with and engage with today. Uh, he draw on films, uh, he wasn't uh, uh, scared of using anything at hand to make his creation uh, as compelling as possible. Uh, in 1958 uh, was, uh, was the beginning of the Cinema Verité uh, at the NFB uh, and in the world. Basically, it was the happening of the live connection between sound and image. So it was for the first time those camera you could take on the field and actually record la vérité, the, 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 the reality. Uh, since uh, a long time also, 1967, the World Fair in Montreal, uh, Colin Lowe, the guy in the middle, uh, created a huge building uh, where they were exploring uh, projection on multi-screen and with a parco inside the building. So this is a, a long tradition at the NFB. All producers uh, are uh, pushed to always question the medium they're working with and try to push it further. Uh, uh, we've just reenact a, a tribute because it's the 50th anniversary of the 1967 fair. Uh, this has uh, been going on until this uh, Saturday. So it's basically the same images, but reinterpreted in this uh, art of uh, Quartier des Spectacles in Montreal. Back to 1971, uh, the first animation computer film was made at the National Film Board. This was a computer uh, that was sitting in the Centre de Recherche Nationale in Ottawa, uh, and it created the first uh, animated uh, computer uh, movie. Uh, 
1992, Colin Lowe again, a little uh, later in his life, uh, created uh, the first IMAX film for the World Fair in Venice. Uh, Venice. Um, and basically it was like a, a traveling movie around Canada. Uh, this is one of the, this is the opening image of the, of the film, uh, the first IMAX film. In 2004, uh, like IMAX was also developed uh, during the time of Daniel Langlois, who developed Softima Softimage, uh, which is used as a software that most uh, uh, effects, special effects in movies use uh, often. Uh, and in 2004, uh, we've, uh, the NFB was the platform where we developed a 3D drawing uh, technology. Uh, this was the first movie that was drawn in space in 3D with the Sandy uh, uh, software. In 2009, uh, this was the opening of the two interactive studios. Uh, one, the one that I work with is based in Montreal, uh, and uh, there's another one in Vancouver. So all the projects I'm going to present to, uh, to you tonight are either by us or by, by them in Vancouver. Uh, this was the first interactive project was basically a, a, a music video with generative words. So you control the, the video by writing and answering the different questions that happen during the movie and all the words uh, come not only from the, the lyrics but only the, also the, the, the meaning of the lyrics and all the synonyms the, the, the lyrics uh, bring to mind. So. This is for the historic part. Uh, since that, uh, we've produced over 60 uh, creative adventures. That's how we call, like to call them. Uh, they're all very difficult in many different ways, uh, but usually uh, they end up to something we're pretty proud of. Um, the way we work is we uh, seek for collaboration as often as possible. So we've worked with newspaper broadcasters, magazine festivals, uh, White Night, which is uh, events happening in, in Canada and Europe also, uh, which during a whole night, all sorts of uh, venues are open to the public and uh, original creations are created specifically for that time in the city. And we've did a couple of those uh, over time. We also collaborate a lot with university uh, labs. Uh, so we've done uh, 40 plus collaborations with a field of expertise of over 100 uh, different, uh, different specialities from biologists, uh, to our archives, people, uh, any kind of people that are relevant uh, to, to the, the project's uh, well-being and, and pushing the limits. Uh, we've worked with over 20, 12 countries, Argentina is, is one, of, uh, one of them at the moment, um, and all those projects uh, got us uh, more than 150 awards. Uh, not all projects get awards, uh, some of them are like failure in many different ways, but usually when we, we get, we hit the target, we, we win lots of awards. Uh, this is the team in, in, uh, in Montreal. Uh, this is the team in Vancouver. So uh, this is the core of what we do, the creators. Uh, so the two teams are more like guidance team, uh, administrative people, producers, uh, production coordinators, but all the creators are from uh, outside the studios. Uh, so they're situated all around the city in Montreal. Vancouver are organized a little differently. They, they, they host the creative team inside uh, the, the, the NFB in Vancouver. The, 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 the dynamics of the city is, is not the same as in Montreal for us in Montreal. There's lots of uh, agency, creative people, uh, and so this is basically uh, for a year the number of creators we work with on 15 or so projects so you can multiply by at least three people per project and uh, then adding all the uh, the workforce behind it. So going into the, uh, the different works. Um, the way I'm, I structured this, uh, this presentation is really trying to push forward 
uh, key principle, like I was saying at the, the very beginning. The first one that is very important, uh, especially when you say interactive, most people connect it to technology. And what we do is not, it has nothing to do with technology in, in many different ways. Um, so we call ourselves techno agnostic. So whatever the technology, if the technology allows us to say what we want to say and to create the experience we want to create, we'll use that technology to that purpose. So that's one uh, key uh, education. So, uh, uh, yeah, behavior of the studio. And this is how we select project and, and, and teams and, uh, and all. So over time, we've worked with web sites, mobile tablets, uh, even performing act, uh, public installation, architectural projection mapping, uh, live streaming, virtual reality, and, and everything you can read there. The main characteristic is that all of those experiences, to some exceptions, are connected to the internet. Um, so meaning drives the technology. Uh, the first project I'm going to use an, as an example is a, a project that was uh, created in 2011 with Arte uh, in, uh, in Paris. So we work a lot with Arte uh, in Paris. It uh, was called... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go to the... Uh, the next one. So it's a it's a project uh, about objects, our relation to objects, um, and basically uh, the way we use technology is we just knew at that time that mobile phones were prevalent in the population more and more. Uh, we knew of their capacity of scanning. And because they were able to scan uh, and we wanted to talk about our relation to objects, we decided to use the scanner to get access to 100 movies, uh, small short movies about a relation to an object. All those objects were brought together in a database uh, where if you scan, for instance, a bottle of water, uh, you would call upon every film that is about water. So that's basically it. Uh, we're platform agnostic, like I was saying. So uh, we had a website, we had a, an, an application, and we also had an installation uh, to the purpose. That installation was brought in different venues, and it was all about our relation to, uh, to object. And it was always the same 100 movies that we've worked with, uh, like 30, 32 different directors. Uh, and, uh, and guiding them into creating a film for that specific format. Another project in the same line, uh, Only Mountain, which is a project uh, that was called upon us by a photographer, uh, Gilbert Duclos, who during numbers of years collected uh, photo photos of uh, Mont Royal, which is the central park was actually designed by the same uh, guy as Central Park in New York. Uh, so this is a representation of it. Uh, and through the, 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 through the device, you access uh, films, uh, photos, photo collection, interviews of all the Montrealers and their relation to the, to the mountain and what it means for them at every season every time in relation to their daily life. Um, it was a collective uh, enterprise uh, and it was all, always connected to, uh, to the internet. Okay, so you can, you can pretty much feel that the image behind is connected to a meteor, meteor database. So depending on when Hi, you connect to the to the the, the documentary, you you see that the same temperature as it is in Montreal uh, at that specific time at, uh, in in time and space. Uh, it was also connected uh, to uh, the tweet fe feeds. So all the music background reacts to every posting people share with us. Uh, so it's a generative music engine that every time an input from the community 
that says something about the uh, the Mont Royal. Uh, the 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 uh, the works reacts to it, and you can actually fe feel it, feeling it or not. And people were sharing their their own stories, so it's now a, a huge uh, the database. Um, another project uh, that was uh, of his time. This is 2012. This was done by uh, our fellows in in Vancouver. Uh, so they wanted to explore storytelling uh, through the eyes of a bear uh, uh, telling his own stories. So how do you do that? That was the intention because it's it's a, a documentary about the cohabitation of animals and humans in Banff National Park in, in uh, Alberta, Canada. Uh, it's the, the place in the world where uh, uh, savage animals uh, stay the closer to, uh, to human beings. And all the technology were allowing us to track. So it's a, it's a project about tracking the, the, the proximity of the, the two species, uh, or even more than two species, uh, in Banff National Park. Uh, again, techno-agnostic, so it was built as a website, uh, but rapidly transformed uh, into an installation that was brought to New Frontier in Sundance, which is pretty much the same setting as Banff in Canada. So it's nature is really uh, savage there, but then you have like uh, ski resorts and, and, and uh, all sorts of things. Uh, so this is an adaptation. So it's the same project, it's the same message we want to deliver, it's the same content, but then we choose different technologies to create a different experience that's built in, in your mobility in, in, the, in the city of, of, uh, of Bell Park City, which is uh, where the Sundance uh, Festival takes place. And one thing that's often the case when you work into those technology is that they become irrelevant when you have that stance that I was talking about, like technology doesn't, don't matter, but if they don't matter, the, the other uh, important thing is that they change all the time. So how do you preserve your, uh, your works? That's one way to do it, is like uh, Bear 71 was created in Flash, uh, and now we have to put an enormous effort to keep the project alive. Uh, and one way to do it is that, okay, so we're going to transfer it into a VR, web VR uh, platform. So it, pro it prolonges its, its uh, living cycle into a new technology that's the new buzz of the moment. And, and this is how we do it. We do it often with the most successful project. We don't do it with all projects, some projects just die in a way, uh, and they become a, an archive uh, that's recorded as a, as a video. Um, this second project, uh, this uh, other project, sorry, uh, The Unknown Photographer, uh, is quite an, an interesting story if you put the, the creative drive uh, in front of the technology. So this is a story of uh, an old album, uh, war, w first World War album that was found uh, north of Montreal. And the photograph who found it uh, uh, wanted to do an interactive piece uh, just because of his relation to the photos, but mostly because of a missing link in his fascination towards those photos, which was who took those photos. So he went into a, a long 15 years research of who, who's the guy who took those photos. It turned out that it was not a photographer, actually. It was a guy from uh, Montreal that was uh, working in London during uh, the, the uh, First World War and was just like copying photos at that time and brought back those photos to Montreal. Um, so at the very beginning we had the photos of relatively poor quality, uh, they were all authentics and we wanted to tell the story of today's war wars uh, through uh, the photos of the First World War. Um, those are a couple of them. So it turned out into uh, the first uh, funding round was about a tablet experience where you would 
uncover the photos and it was a game that you would through the the the, the uncovering of, of the photos and their location in the original space in Europe, uh, you would find out who the, this unknown photograph was. Uh, like I, I said, it, it turned out during the research and during that process that it was not a, a, photographer, uh, a photographer at all. Uh, so we retrieved his, uh, some members of his family, so it was pretty clear we didn't have a story. But the intention was, was still there. It's like we wanted to tell uh, stories of, of uh, today's war, uh, war through the eyes of the First World War. Uh, so at, at this time, we just killed the project. Uh, it was a project that we made with uh, 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 people in Montreal that are called Turbulent. Uh, so I, 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 it was a co-production with them. So uh, Marc and I just discussed, and so, so we don't have any project. What we want to achieve, that technology, that uh, scenario doesn't provide the strength we're looking for, for that story. Um, but we're stubborn in many different ways. We, we wanted to tell that kind of story, so we decided to move it to a Unity platform, which is a game engine, uh, and, and we, we were still on a, uh, on a tablet, uh, but we tried to tell basically the same story uh, into a new uh, universe, a different experience, a different technology. Um, we weren't satisfied with that, that that thing either. So when we had the, the, the prototype at hand, we just move through it and say, well, it's the same poor stories. And the creative team was really finding, ver was finding very hard the creation of, of this work because they felt that the photos weren't saying anything. Uh, they were old photos of the First World War. Uh, they, m most of them have, have been published in, in newspaper at, at that time. Uh, so the, the, the team was really, like, we could say even destroyed creatively. And what we decided at that, that point is like, okay, they, they were, just before, they were using a regular production process where we have a, an old agency behind a project. So we started discussing, uh, them and I, uh, to say, okay, so let's take another, we knew, uh, take another uh, shot at it. So it was the third shot at the same project, at the same story. Uh, and what we decided to do is, because it was built in a game engine that was, that's called Unity, uh, we knew at that time that we could input it into a VR helmet. Uh, so we just decided to try it. Uh, we were we were still in in that space where we could have killed the project even though there was a, already a couple ten thousand dollar invested in the process. Uh, so we tested it in in the VR helmet, uh, and quite like instantly. And this is like one of the final, but you can imagine like uh, just. Uh, polygram environment and it was clear when we put it in the, that technology that we had the, the means to actually tell the story as we were imagine, imagining the, the story. So I'm just gonna give you a, a glimpse of it. So that's the, the Oculus, I'm just gonna. Remember the war, but my memories are distorted. My thoughts are oh, a deafening cacophony. So basically, uh, what we decided is that we we fictionized the documentary part of it in order to tell the story. Uh, we've created. Uh, into the memory of, of that unknown photograph, uh, authentic souvenirs of war, uh, of, uh, of soldiers that actually went to first, second, 
uh, well, first, not the Second World and uh, uh, other wars that are more of our time. We've interviewed them. We've worked with specialists of, of war just to in, in, influx into the storytelling uh, authenticity of how it is when you come back to war. And, and you, you never talk, uh, like most people who, who were to a war don't like to talk about it. That's what we learned. Um, and uh, so we've decided to, to, uh, to create an experience where you would be in his head, allowing us uh, all liberties, especially uh, into VR. Since in VR... I am now a very old man. You can do pretty much uh, anything you want. Uh, gravity doesn't hold. Uh, every law of physics you can play with. Uh, every uh, liberty you want to take creatively, you're pretty much allowed to if you have uh, like the, the 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 right programmers to uh, to do so. Uh, and and Turbula is a, a place where they build games, so they have the resources inside uh, to actually uh, uh, play with with the, the software to a level that we needed. Um, and this is a walkthrough uh, of, of the project where suddenly the photos are a pretext to, uh, to actually tell the story we wanted to tell. But then again, we were able to, uh, to create I'm gonna, like universe where the photos would take a different, just because we blow them out of proportion, they suddenly regain a strength that they had at that time and they, they were de uh, depraved of uh, nowadays. Uh, we were also able to play uh, with gravity, so all the photos are there, but as you experience them, you're in a state of suspension. When you're inside the goggles, there's no floor behind you, so you're kind of floating in space. Uh, so your, your uh, experience of the photos is changed just because you're in that, that state of uh, of experience of, and we uh, were able also to create a, a poetic and a amplify uh, elements of the photo as a design guide for the project. Uh, for instance, this is the the Vimy monument that was never in in any of those photos, uh, but it's the end of the of of the experience. And like this giant that you see behind. Uh, is is a is part of a, a story some soldiers tell. Uh, we were told uh, where everything uh, changes in your your memory. So we played with that material to to tell the same story we wanted to tell at the very beginning, uh, but into like three different uh, approach to technology. Uh, we're, like I, I told at the very beginning, we're always seeking uh, for collaborations because they make you grow, because they confront you uh, to people that don't have the same culture you have, the same uh, uh, ways of, of working, uh, the same different knowledge and, and stuff like that. Uh, so very early in the studio's history, uh, we tend to associate with people that have an, a different uh, interface that, that we had. So we came from the web, the, the tablets, all screens. And since 2013, uh, we're going more and more outside of the screens to play into uh, interactivity in, 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 in physical space. This is uh, in the downtown Montreal area. And during the municipal election in 2013, we've created a, a, a megaphone, literally, uh, where people would go and basically shout out uh, a wish, a dream, or something they wanted to say to the, the politics of uh, Montreal City. Uh, and the way we did it, again, so it's like what we try to imagine what would be the speaker's corner in 2013 uh, with technology, with enhancing uh, uh, the, the, the fact of taking uh, speech in, in the public. And so all the words of everyone would go into a database and the, the database would select the words and try to recreate meaning of everyone that inputted words and ideas into this big uh, surface building uh, in the center of, of Montreal. So at, at some point, it was on for a month 
at some point you could get a feeling of what Montrealers wanted for their, their cities. Uh, this was a call for project. Uh, so we work with uh, the people from Moment Factory, which is a, a, an agency in, in Montreal, a creative agency in Montreal, that have all the mastery to actually pull this through. Uh, and this is uh, what we wanted to, uh, to accomplish. Another collaboration quite uh, different, uh, which brings us back to the, the screens. Uh, like some of you know of that project, it was a, yeah. Uh, so it's a project that we uh, co-created with uh, Encuentro. So I'm just going to let it run to give you an idea. So basically, uh, the, pr the project uh, started uh, in, our, in Buenos Aires uh, with the people of Encuentro. Uh, I'm just going to jump here and go and come back. Uh, so the, the, it was, uh, this is often how we, we work. We just bring people to the table, different uh, perspective, the different expertise. Uh, so we brought in from Montreal a developing team. Uh, because Encuentro was pretty new in doing interactive. So we pull all those people together during a week uh, through a workshop. Uh, and the, the two, the fir I wasn't there, but the first two days of, of, the, of the workshop was basically just sensing one another and trying to figure out, okay, what is common between the Quebec youth and the youth in, in Argentina? And we ended up uh, to a relation to violence. And that relation to violence turned into a desire to express and to expose violence in a daily life. And it was pretty clear that in the two societies, people were not screaming. So it's not a practice in those two societies to scream. And this is how we ended up with the project. Uh, primal, which is the same word in French and, and in, in Spanish. Uh, so this is often what happens. I'm just going to go back. Uh, so to actually achieve that, we, we were back in, in Montreal. We went into different schools, talked to different children, uh, kids, like more like uh, teenagers than children, actually. Uh, and we created tents so they would feel at ease to scream. Uh, so this is how we do it. And once we we knew they were OK to scream, then we could move on to the next stage of the project. Uh, I talked a little about those kinds of process today during the, 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 the pitching uh, preparation, but it's really like, if you have an idea, you have to test just this idea, not the whole project, as soon as possible, just to make sure that you're on the right path. So, and it was really just like the, the language difference, the relations difference uh, was, was really a challenge. And w one thing that we didn't do at that time, but I'm going to tell you a little more about that, is really early in the, in the creative process when you collaborate, you have to make sure that every word that everyone is saying has the same meaning for everyone in, in the team. And we even, uh, now what we do, knowing from that experience, uh, is we create uh, lexicons uh, where if you say reality, reality means the same thing for everybody. Uh, and into a creative process, that is something key, especially if you collaborate over culture uh, or even in, into like two different uh, business or, or corporation, you, you have to, to make sure that everybody is understanding the same thing. So this is it for this project. 
Um, one other key uh, principle that drives us is, uh, is you will never achieve an interactive process if you don't build a team. Uh, and the, the team nourishes one another uh, very often uh, in in key uh, in key uh, decisions, uh, uh, like in the in the film process, pretty the the technology is pretty much mastered. In interactive, because you never uh, you depend a lot on technology, uh, you have to make sure that you have someone in your team your core creative team that understands deeply the technology you're working with. Uh, and this, like, would you do a movie with someone that, with nobody that knows anything about light? So it's, it's as important uh, into technology. Uh, and for us, uh, a creator is a team of at least three person. So you have an artistic person, an editorial person, and a technology person. And from that, we can build a different team. But usually, and it, it's often difficult, even in our relation to, to festivals, they want the director. And like, there's no director. Like, it's a three people team, and the project wouldn't exist. It's not the vision of one person. It's at least the vision of three person. Uh, so the way we move into that, that principle is really try to recruit uh, as soon as possible. Uh, and one thing we do, we're in our second edition right now, is uh, Interactive IQ. Uh, some of you may, may know of that. It, we co-produced uh, this edition, the first edition with Arte also and the new edition, which is called 60 Seconds Shorts for Mobile Platforms. Uh, we added the people from IDFA uh, into the, the, the process. And basically what we, we, we want to achieve with that is try to identify all over the world where are those themes residing. Uh, so the, this first, we got 163 submission uh, pretty much from all over the world. Uh, we had people from uh, Santiago, uh, Barcelona. Uh, Barcelona was well, this one we just saw uh, pass by. Uh, also El Salvador, uh, Buenos Aires uh, also. Uh, so this is one way of doing it. It's like you constantly have to seek and look for those duo, trio of, of person that clearly understand what producing into interaction uh, means. Uh, so this is uh, an example of another way to, to create those themes is to pair people. Uh, so this is a pair, this is another one, and the two behind. So he's a musician, he wanted to do, uh, I'm gonna show you the, the project after, but he wanted to uh, uh, interpret uh, how uh, Norman McLaren uh, used to work on pelic uh, pelliculas or on the film. Uh, but he needed uh, Mike, who's the technologist, to actually def define his idea and refine it so it would work in the public settings. Uh, Daniel Irigui, who's originally from uh, Bogota, and uh, Theodore Rouchev, who's an animator in the animation studio in Montreal. Uh, again, he had like great ideas of interaction, but absolutely zero knowledge of how to, to create an experience. So he, pr he proposed to us two different concepts that we've rejected. And after the second one, he just asked us, okay, so what do I do? Well, you accept that the director is a team and that you're not the sole person uh, de deciding on what the experience will be. Uh, and, and that went through. Uh, the, the two girls are a, 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 a team in, in life, so that wasn't uh, that, that hard. So basically, it gave this tribute to Norman McLaren. Uh, Mesdames et Messieurs. So we used three different films of Norman McLaren, l l give out all the rights to use them in a creative, uh, cr creative way. Uh, NFB is the owner of, of the legacy of Norman McLaren, so it was quite easy to just get access to all those rights. And this is the project from the musician. Uh, there was also a, a, 
production, uh, projection facade uh, 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 concourse, concours, yeah, concourse, competition. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, from all over the world, so it allowed us to identify other teams of, of, of people, and that was all brought into uh, into the Montreal downtown area. Uh, those kinds of projects often are not seen uh, elsewhere or rarely uh, because they're so huge in, in, in production and very uh, site-specific in many different ways. But even that, through those uh, projects, we gain lots of ex experience of, of, of failures and of uh, optimization of technology, of interaction. We see how people react in different kind of, of setting, and this allows us to go further into the interactivity. So the equation we're always trying to, to set is how to create a, an experience. Uh, so to create that experience, you have to build an interface, and that interface is highly dependent of technology, and you have to play the three of those together. So the experience is the, the, the creative lead most of the time, the interface is all the design, the artistic uh, person, the technology is the programmer. Uh, and the way uh, you do the, uh, the uh, marriage, the, the, uh, the wedding, yeah, how do you associate those three people into one creative impulse and idea, is that you iterate. So all the, the prejudice of the different people are, are shocked by the prejudice of the other, per, of the other person, uh, which allows a, a better project at the very end, uh, so we think. So iterate, iterate, and iterate, like I was saying it, uh, earlier on, it's like every idea needs to be tested. So through a process, we also sub, uh, sub, subject those three person or four sometimes uh, to uh, uh, focus groups. Uh, so we, we have people at the NFB that we just call upon them or friends or uh, a, a base of people that uh, follow us and we, we call them at different time into a production process and we just give them the piece and we see how they react. And it's very challenging for creators to do so because often you had like you were so convinced that your idea was working so well uh, and you were so totally wrong. People don't get nothing of, of what you want to achieve. Um, so this is uh, usually this is a part where the creative team uh, has has a big down afterwards. Um, so this is just one example of. So we wanted to. This is a uh, Norman McLaren. That's the guy from Bogota and, and Theodor Ushev. I was talking about who's the, the animator. So they wanted to use uh, three films of Norman McLaren, which is called uh, Horizontal, Vertical, and di Diagonals. Uh, and those films needed to be projected uh, in the same way Norman McLaren would have worked it on a, uh, on a big facade on the Bibliotheca in, in Montreal, in the heart of Montreal. So this is, we needed to, to make sure that the, the, the original movies were allowing, allowing us to take part of them and create something that would be interesting to project on a, on a big facade. So this, the, this was the, the extract of the, the movie and we've, uh, in, the, in studios, we've worked with different uh, size of production. Uh, so a small maquette, then after a big, word, uh, a big wall in, in the neighborhood, uh, and at that time we knew we, we, we knew it was working. Afterwards there was uh, this big structure that was built and you were controlling the movies and their representation on the facade by scratching the surface, which is pretty much the way uh, Norman McLaren did all, all those, uh, all those movies and many other movies. So it was you were using your hands and scratching the metal surface and the, the whole wall was reacting to your interaction, depending on if you were moving vertically, horizontally, or, or uh, vert oh, vertically, horizontally, and <laughs> you get it. Uh, 
and and we design a lot so and we always uh, ask the creators to just draw it just just draw draw the idea or build a maquette and and we'll see if it works and it will allow us as producers but every expertise that's called upon to actually see and get a, a true meaning of what the creator wants to achieve um, Am I okay on time? Yeah. Okay, another uh, project. I'm going to go uh, quite fast over this one. Uh, but this is a, a, a dream team, if I may say so. So this is a five team people uh, have containing all the, the knowledge and the expertise needed to achieve that project. The project is called Journal of Insomnia, uh, which is basically a, a platform where you will encounter insomniacs all over, from all over the world. Uh, at any time in, in, on our planet, uh, one out of three people suffers insomnia. Uh, so the technology, uh, it was pretty clear that because it's connected, because it's worldwide, uh, we were able to connect people at a specific time uh, during their insomnia to someone insomniac like, like them or uh, to someone that doesn't know nothing about insomnia. but what you had to do is you had to take a rendezvous through, a tw uh, through Twitter to some, someone uh, from the database and you would have a, a, your experience was only available, the total experience was only available at night in the time zone where you lived. Uh, so the machine was uh, knew how to connect people internationally at a specific time where it was the middle of the night and you were awake. Um, so to actually pull that, uh, you needed not only a, a programmer, but also someone that deeply understa understands how the internet works and how it, it, all its connection uh, can bring this project to life. Uh, and this, this is, to achieve this level of connectivity, of interaction, you, you really need the, a deep expertise like Ideas like that just come as a team where all expertise pitch in and, and, and the project really came from that process. So at, at, the, at the very end, people could draw, uh, they could write to the database and share their, their dreams. Um, also again, like we wanted to create that, that space that was presented at Storyscape in uh, 2013. Uh, if I remember correctly, so this is the time lapse, and to actually uh, uh, bring the project in that context, is it running? No, uh, we brought in a team on top of the first team with different sets of expertise uh, that was actually selected by the the core team. So we want to work with those guys uh, because they're they know and, and all of that. So the, the creative process of that spe specific piece was uh, done by uh, two other person on, t on top of the, the five person I, I'm talking about. And when I say like the five person, of course there's programmers around them. It's like, it's the core creative team I, I mean by... Uh... So even in, in those kinds of process, uh, the like the 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 creative uh, the first creative team uh, was really uh, had an expertise on on web platform and connected uh, objects, uh, so they they needed to find the the, the communication base uh, to engage with uh, Justin, which is the, the the main creator for that other version of the same project, but it's connected to the same database. It uses all the same. Uh, objects but it creates a different experience uh, where it be, it becomes a collective experience where you can actually see people uh, inside the box uh, so finding common definition for the same words another example that's quite interesting in in uh, in many ways is uh, j'aime les patates i love potatoes which is a, a game uh, uh, that was designed with uh, those three <laughs> a different person, so she was the lead creator with uh, a documentaries that wanted to do a project about um, uh, innovative, innovative process uh, around the world. Uh, so she had five, uh, five stories to tell, 
uh, he's a game designer, uh, Ruben, uh, from a, a, a place called Minority in Montreal, which came, he came out of the big AAA studios. So he's a, a senior game designer. Uh, and he's the illustrator, uh, Patrick. And what happened during that process is uh, maybe like three or four months, and this was a, a, a key pivotal moment for us to, to, from now on, we'll always have a lexicon uh, of everything. So three or four months into the process, they were talking about reality, uh, the word, and they, we figured out that like all the things that weren't locking in the project uh, were because they were using reality in a different sense. To the documentaries, reality is the real world. To a game designer, reality is what you experience when you play. Uh, so this was key, and at that specific moment, all the project uh, went like a, 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 sh a shooting star, uh, and we were able to uh, begin prototyping. So they were understanding each other. So these are the different uh, phases of, of the project. Uh, so at that point, the, uh, the, the work of the illustrator is not in the project yet. It's just a 3D space with persona that represent the reality from the, di the, the, mo the movie director perspective. Uh, so they're just testing at this point and testing and they end up with that project. Uh, and this is, uh, well, this is the French version of it, but you'll, you'll get the essence of it. Uh, so it's a, a project where uh, every t action that happens in the game is modulated through a pattern of innovative uh, experience in the real world. So we took the five stories of the film director, put it out on the wall, told the story of those five and, and find the common grounds and all those common grounds became the, 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 the game design uh, sch schematic. Uh, so everything you're going to go through, uh, through Skip, which is the name of, of the little persona, uh, is actually what someone trying to change things uh, in the real world is experiencing. So this is how the two were, br were brought together and you can understand that as long as we didn't get the same understanding of what reality is, this was not possible to achieve. Uh, another project that, is, uh, that was also at, at, at Storyscape in 2015 as an pro early prototype um, is a, a co-production between uh, uh, Camera Lucida, France Télévision, uh, MSIV, DNFB, and uh, another place in Montreal called uh, DPT, which did Holy Mountain, uh, amongst other projects with us. Uh, so Enemy is both a virtual reality experience where you physically move into a space uh, and you meet uh, six different combatants of three different uh, uh, ongoing wars. So Israel, Palestine, the Maras in El Salvador and uh, the Congolese uh, government, RDC, and the, 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 the factions in, in the jungle. Uh, so the project is now alive since uh, May. It was presented at the uh, Institut du Monde Arabe in Paris, uh, and it's now opening this Friday in, at MIT Museum in Boston. It's a project that uh, was created uh, by a director, uh, which is Karim Ben Khalifa. He's a war photographer, well known. He's published in, in many, uh, like New York Times, uh, Vanity Fair, and all like very big magazines. Uh, and through this process as a photographer, he came to an evidence that my photography no longer have the impact I was looking for when I started to be a war photographer. So what if technology uh, would create a different experience and 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 um, bring awareness to uh, to the, the reality of the soldiers on the ground. Uh, but then again, he's a photographer that has never done technology before, 
so he, he brought with him this team, which is uh, Fabien, which is a 3D uh, specialist uh, based in Paris, uh, that would allow Karim to to recreate uh, into a photogrammetric reality uh, those six combatants. So this is images of the shooting and all the technology needed to actually recreate those combatants into a virtual world. Um, so they, they're, they f they're photographed with, so Fabien is not only masters image, but also ma masters the, like if you're familiar with the Xbox kin Kinect technology. So there, there was five uh, Kinect camera and the soldiers were mapped all, all the way around and we just asked them to do to perform certain gesture to allow us to bring them into the final process but this is where a collect collective team is key and prototyping is even more important that like you have to prototype so this was uh, pretty much built like video gamers uh, build their games. Like at the very beginning, every idea is put into the technology to make sure that you know if it works or not, or if it, or it, if it possi if it's possibly working into a reasonable time lapse of production. Um, there was another part of it, which is the tracking cameras. This is an infrared camera that allows you to know uh, where a person stands in a 3D environment, because into the, I'm going to show you, you're going to get a better idea of, of the experience, but you go and you meet the warriors face to face. So the system has to know exactly where everyone in the experience is at a specific time, so people don't collide. Uh, so this is another aspect we, we needed to, uh, to prototype quite early. So you, we, we, we use in that time like cheap material. The, the cheapest is the better, but it needs to perform the same functionality as the, the final technology, which in that case is, is quite expensive. Uh, so this is early prototype. This is uh, just before Storyscape in, in uh, 2000. It was in, done in, in New York. Um, so we ended up with a, a space where you can, we can manage 20 people in a 300 uh, square meter space, not colliding with each other, and we allow them to encounter those those six different people. So this is I'm gonna just let just to give you an idea of the settings. So this this was shot in in Paris. Those are the, the six combatants that will, you will meet in the virtual reality. So, so those people uh, are moving in real space, but to them, they're moving in the virtual space. Uh, so this is something that was a long process of three years of prototyping, bringing it to the public. So if it was in two f May 2015 in New York, the early prototype, and we've just released it uh, two year, a little more than two years after. Uh, so this is the, the length of the process to uh, achieve this kinds of, uh, of project where you don't even know the, 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 if the technology is gonna hold at one point or another. Uh, the technology is often evolving so fast that you have to have around your team someone that does a that makes sure that they're f they follow the evolution of technology because in a process of 18 to 24 months you can end up when, when you release the technology is al already de uh, passé like you're far already behind. So this is what they see. This is an early prototype also, but this is what they see in, in, inside the, the helmet. Like basically they're in a, in a virtual photo uh, gallery uh, where they will, uh, they will meet the soldiers. And the way we, we do that is like this is, we recreate them.
So this is the, the virtual environment where you actually uh, are when you're inside the helmet. And they're talking to you, their eyes are moving, so this is why the tracking system was so important uh, to, to prototype at many different times, uh, because this is how you feel the presence of those six uh, soldiers. Um, and this is an image of uh, a tracking system. So uh, at one point or another, you, you see like all the spectrums. We had to test very, uh, when we were in, in Tribeca, it was one person at a time. And the person was with a backpack with a, a long wire attached to it. Uh, so it was pretty clear that if we wanted to achieve what we wanted, uh, we needed to get rid of the wire. Uh, so we had, it's, it's the testing that like, if you want a five person, the wires have, have to go. So we have to figure out a way to get rid of the wire. So this is the this is an image I took in Boston like a couple of days ago. Uh, so this is uh, the team that will do the other part of the project, uh, which is the the AR reality. So VR is very cool, very fun, but you only can manage a couple hundred people a day. Uh, so the 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 access is very limited. Uh, so it's more designed for a museum space or exposition space. And the, the app, the augmented reality app, uh, was a, a, a key component of the project at the very beginning because the, uh, Karim's intention was to bring back his interview and the, the combatant into an augmented reality application uh, where you would be allowed to to share the, the encounters you've made with those uh, six people. Uh, so this is an early prototype of the, of the, of the app. The app will be released uh, this Friday on all Google Play and app stores. And then again, it was a long process just trying to figure out how uh, augmented reality really works. Uh, so you, we tested different technologies. Uh, at one point, we, we were using uh, Google's Tango tablet, uh, then it got bought. Uh, it was not Google at that time, but it got, it got bought. Um, and so the, some part of the technology weren't uh, accessible, so we had like program a number of, of lines of codes and suddenly the, the device weren't, uh, uh, the technology went private. So this is kind of a challenge you have uh, going through those kinds of projects. Now this is what we're going to release uh, this Friday. So it's basically the, the same enemy. Exp experience. Who is he? And why is he the enemy? And above all, where is he? The enemy, the other, is that unpredictable, irrational and brutal being. He's always invisible, but he's always there, somewhere. You are now surrounded by the six fighters I met. Your presence can change everything. Who do you want to meet first? Choose a place outside where you will have enough room to move around. So th this was a, a, a key uh, a key learning in in the when you deal with with, vert, with augmented reality, uh, this specific part of the scenario came by testing it because when you you're inside your house you can say that and suddenly is over your kitchen counter or wherever he sits. So it was pretty clear that we had to convince people to get to a place to meet those people. And it had a meaning uh, we were able to convey, I think. Uh, we'll see how people react, but to the moment, I, I think that, that was achieved. But it's really through testing that it was clear that, okay, in this scenario, Karim, you need to invite people to go outside or to find a place where they'll be able, there'll be enough space uh, to actually encounter those per, uh, uh, people. Uh, just to amplify the, the importance of the team creator, I'm just going to present quickly to you, uh, to me, what is, is a dream team. Uh, they did uh, Blah Blah, uh, Way to Go. They're a, a quatuor from Montreal. Uh, 
uh, and they created a way to go and every uh, they're an inspiration to me as a producer uh, the way they work is like I call them sculptors of the digital era so they really work inside the, the the machines and the programming to create a unique experience I'm gonna talk over it so you'll get um, an understanding of it uh, but they they totally uh, use ex exactly the process uh, that I'm, I'm talking about. So Vincent, which is the lead creator of, of the Quatuor, uh, usually comes to us with an idea. So I wanna do something about our incapacity to pause in real life. So we're always in, in the middle of something and we, we lost the capacity to observe the simplest thing in nature. Uh, so all the, pr this is, this is the original intention. And what they do after is like, okay, so if you want to say that, uh, what technology do you use? Okay, we want to use 360. We want to create an experience where there's an immersiveness to it. And immersive doesn't mean VR in that sense. It's just an experience where your total attention will be driven towards the screen in front of you because things are moving in a familiar uh, way. So they, they've created uh, that piece, which is called Way to Go. You get, you get the, the feeling of what they, they want to, to achieve. So in the experience, you can walk, you can jump, you can fly, you can do pretty much anything. Uh, but the, the, the whole meaning of the experience comes when you stop uh, and start looking at a specific detail. And all those details are, are uh, populated all around the, the program uh, and you encounter them as you go. Uh, I'm just going to let it go. Okay, so this, this thing is, is really interesting. The, the black guy behind uh, with a box on his head uh, is actually uh, something happened when they were filming with a, a 360 camera. So this is the, the, the settings. So this is the original prototype of the camera. This is where the box came from. This is the uh, next stage. But basically, they say the camera sees everything, it's 360. So it sees the sky, it sees the floor. So what do you do with the person holding the camera? Oh, you make it as a persona into the experience. So this is where they moved on and you, they started giving a meaning to the, that, that person. So the, the, the pole you see is the metronome that beats the experience. So this is, to me, this is like how clever when you have all the, 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 the core expertise around the table, you can figure out those little tricks that will turn an obstacle in, into a creative uh, output. Um, they, they, they've never designed game, but they, they use uh, all of the g gaming techniques to actually create the surroundings. So they draw a lot, they sketch a lot. So it's really easy to communicate with them at, at, at any time and it totally understand each other. They've been working for a long time together, so that's another part of it. But still, they, they all uh, come together uh, at one point or another. Uh, Caroline, who's the, the, the designer, uh, so she created the last persona that you're going to be out of the, the, the boxing challenge. So this is how the, the, the little persona become. Uh, the magician in the group is really uh, Edouard Langteau, uh, with here with uh, Vincent. Um, and it was the coder, basically. And he, one of the specificity of that team is that they build everything from scratch. Uh, so if when that's what I mean when you have a, a programmer in your team. Of course, you, you can plugins and, and use different programs already existing. So we do that often. But when you create the code as you create the experience, then you control the total interactivity of the experience. Um, this is just uh, an example. I'm, I know those are... <laughs> uh, so they, they, they're, so they, they've decided they needed a, a, a sky that was able to move. So he actually creates the sky with the cielo, nueves, uh, the colors, orange, blue. Uh, so everything is, is 
coded as the vision of the group comes together at different stage of the project. And uh, this is also something that came out of that kind of, of approach to creation. Uh, this is Vincent in his own experience in VR, because at one point uh, we've decided that the language of programming would be WebGL. And uh, at the final stage of the project, we knew that WebGL was capable, you were capable of experiencing a VR experience through that, the same web platform. Uh, so the project became uh, an immersive uh, into uh, a VR helmet experience, and it changes everything. Uh, suddenly, uh, you're inside uh, a painting, and you're just moving along a painting uh, with all the, the, the gaming capacity. So. The way to achieve that is uh, to stay focused all, the, all, the, all, all through the process. So technology is just a challenge. If the intention is core at the very beginning, you originally, uh, even if you have lots of challenges at the very end, you end up with the same creative intention if that original intention is very clear. So technology is just a way to achieve your creative intention at the very end. Uh, one minute, so I'm, I'm gonna close, I'm gonna go very fast over those projects. Okay, so this is pretty much uh, what I wanted to say. I'm just gonna close on our next building in the art of Montreal. Um, so we're moving to the downtown area, for those who know the NFB in Montreal, we're very far away from anything in, in Montreal city. So uh, it will bring us even closer to, to the, the, the creative community in Montreal and connects us. It's a new building, it's all uh, like uh, cutting edge building connected to the internet. Uh, to the, the main hub uh, going into Montreal, so our connective ca capacity will, like, I don't know the, the ratio, but will be even more extent. Uh, so this is uh, the new uh, building, uh, and we'll have, we're building a lab inside of it. We're giving, bringing in new capacities uh, to explore even more the, the technologies and prototype it. So this is for VR dome project. It's just a, a basically a balloon that forms a half hemisphere where you can share stories uh, of uh, VR without uh, being in the helmet. So this is another way of collaborating and bringing creation all together uh, and people for people to see the same thing at the very same time and react to it at the very same time. Uh, we're also going to be testing on uh, children uh, because they're the future. That's a joke. Uh, so this is... <laughs> This is it. Uh, this is the, the future building. Thank you so much for your attention. <laughs>Now we have time for two questions. It was very inspiring. Uh, Richard, we can stay here listening to you forever, I think, but we have to sleep. So it's important that we quit. But it's uh, an amazing and a lot of rhythm uh, presentation. So it's amazing the, the, the projects that you develop in, at NFB. So we have time for two questions for Luis Richard from, to, from NFB. Who wants to break the ice? I will keep you because we have only one mic, so we have to, to transfer the mic quickly. Eh, muchas gracias por la presentación, muy completa, muy buena. Eh, quedé con una sensación de que estamos en presencia, claro, de, de una herramienta con mucho potencial, con la posibilidad de, de verdaderamente abrir y expandir el, el, el mundo, las conciencias. Eh, y en ese sentido me pregunto si es que ustedes tienen experiencia participando en procesos eh, formativos con niños, eh, instituciones de, de educación, Eh, si es que nos puede contar algo acerca de esa, de esa experiencia, si es que la tienen. Yeah, uh, so, 
like most of the projects we work with, uh, we have a, a, a oh, sorry. Uh, we have a, an education team inside the NFB, uh, and usually in the, in different sets of projects, uh, if if we know it's it's relevant or it really uh, uh, complies with what they're looking for, uh, they go in very early into the process. I haven't mentioned it, but lots of the the, the enemy uh, projects they've they've been following it uh, to the very beginning. So sometimes the during uh, uh, the production of a project, uh, there's another parallel uh, team building all the, the, the assets uh, to bring this uh, pro specific project in schools. Uh, the, the Primal project was a, a project very aimed at education because in Cointreau, that's the, the nature of, of, of uh, the public service. Uh, so yeah, I, if I got the question right, that that's pretty much core uh, of of what we do is we as soon as possible if we feel there's a, a way of connecting to school uh, from every every level up to university, uh, we we do so. Did I get the question right? Yeah, all right. And you have as well a uh, part of your website which is educational, no? Edu uh, edu edu educational. Changing. It's changing. Yeah. Okay. Usually we were aiming at the uh, uh, professors, and now we've changed all the approach. So there's the to the the learner. So as as the the learner is the 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 key client, if if I may so. So that's a big shift we've been planning for the last 12 months and moving on. So we had to adapt all projects to that other approach. Okay, uh, more questions? Yeah, we have uh, there. We wanna the last question. Uh, hola. Uh, Quería hacerte una consulta específica sobre ese proyecto que se llama Way to Go. Eh, dijiste una frase que me quedó dando vuelta porque me recordó mucho a una frase que me dijo mi padre cuando era más pequeño, que uno no ve en el día a día ciertos detalles. Me quedó dando vuelta el elemento de que vas caminando por el sendero y se fija específicamente en una rana. La frase que me decía mi padre era porque andar con la cabeza baja no ves el detalle de que hay una flor creciendo entre el concreto. <laughs> I'm going over it again. Uh, in the app, there was a picture of a frog. Like, for me, that's the specific detail. That's the objective of the app. But my question is, like, if you're trying to make an evidence that there is a lot of detail in a simple walk through a forest, you can perfectly put a picture of any frog in the world, make it not like black and white, like the setting, and say that, yeah, you missed that, de that detail, but you're leaving a lot of details behind, like when you simply walk and feel like a spider web, uh, like uh, rosar, uh, like touching your arm, like you talk about augmented reality, but you're leaving a lot of reality aspects behind. I don't know if I'm made it clear. So my question basically is how you uh, make a progress of this. You showed us a sphere. Is that sphere using another senses from reality? I don't know if I'm made it clear. The existential question of any interactive producer sign is is what am I making but yeah that's that's I don't I, I won't have an answer to that the the only uh, try I can make is uh, we become often desensitized to our outside world in and to our outside key ideas of being together and we feel that we never, we always need to, to strive to like, is that, as that point has been, had, uh, has been made yet? 
and in that way to go specific, it's it's clearly not there yet. Our relation to nature, we haven't got it right. So this is how we decide to go on an interactive project. S sometimes people come to us with ideas, and we say, no, exactly like if do an, a, a photo exposition about that and it, it will be perfect. This is what we mean by techno-agnostic. It's like we need to feel that interactivity and immersiveness will bring something new to the same subject that's been oversee often and often. So this is kind of our posture, but yeah, I totally, I actually got it in, in Spanish, I think. But it was too existential for me. <laughs> But yeah, that, that's what I can say now. Did I answer that, that correct? It was a very big, tricky question to end the session, but we prepared with him before in order to, <laughs> to put you like in this, in this way. But So uh, thank you very much, Luis Richard Tremblay, and let's give a big round of applause to Richard and the National Film Board of Canada. <laughs> <laughs>